Hello and welcome back. Okay, here's the new reset and clock circuit I've started building. Quick reminder, if I push the reset button, it enters into the reset state and that triggers a load on the 193 counter chip. And then as we count down towards zero, it drops out of reset state. So if I put this back in the circuit, it should give us the reset logic we want nice and simply but I'll just have the single stepping clock here. And so now I'd like to add a automatic clock. Need to make a bit of room. Okay, it's a bit more compact. I also think I don't need the LEDs for the counter anymore. We can get rid of the not reset state LED. So now enter reset, get the four clocks, and then we're done. Right, that's good. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is build a a stable timer circuit. I'll use a 555 again, and then we'll work out how to combine them all up. Okay, I'm going to cross connect the threshold and trigger lines again. Pull the reset down. Let's get an LED on that output. That's a good sign. So now we're interested in seeing what kind of range we've got. That looks pretty good. Let's measure it though. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so we're currently 12.2 something hertz. So that's the lowest. And at the top end, we're about 180 hertz. That's not bad. Okay, I do want to be able to go a lot higher than that though, but I don't think we're going to be able to do the full range on the pot. That's cool. Right, so what I've done here is I've put a much smaller capacitor in which should relate to a higher frequency. Now, whilst I've put this up the top, it's in the same location as here, it's between the uh, cross-connected pins here and ground. So that's going from 130 kilohertz down to 12 kilohertz. So this button is basically connecting in this larger capacitor in circuit, otherwise it's the small cap. I am re reminded that we're supposed to put a 10 nanofarad capacitor between pin 5 and ground. Need one here as well. We're going to try and do a shorter wire here as well. Once I've got a switch in place, I probably won't actually need displays for either of these LEDs. But for now, let's keep that there. Okay, so I need another couple of switches to try and implement a digital switch between these clocks. I found these switches in a component tray and I think it might be quite good. Okay, so the vertical pairs of leads are cross connected and across they connect when I push the button. Okay, so if I pull up and then have the button clamp down to ground, 
I should have a low going signal when I push the button. Now those aren't debounced, but I think what I'm going to do is use a set reset latch exactly the same as I did over here. Okay, let's get a couple of green LEDs out for this. Kind of annoying we used one of the spare NAND gates over here because otherwise we could have done it all in one chip. Once we're happy with the functionality of this, I may go back and see if we can swap around a few things to use unutilized gates and uh, see if we can simplify the whole thing down. Okay, so once again, I'm going to cross connect the outputs of one to the inputs of another. Okay, so we take the output lines over to the LEDs. So it's the first input to the NAND gates covered. Have a two inputs need to come from the buttons. And there is our latch working as we would expect. Okay, so we've got these two clock signals, fast one and a single step. We've got a set reset latch, and I want to use the current state of this to choose between one or the other clock signal. Okay, so this is a 153. It's essentially the same selector that we've used in the ALU and in the fetch unit. Okay, so that's the select A input. Third pin along. Select B will pull down for now. Same with the enable lines. Let's get an LED in here for the output. Okay, now our output clock here needs to be driven by our combined clock. But this appears to be working. So we've got a push button selection of either the single step clock or the faster clock. We don't actually need these LEDs here anymore, but I'll leave them there for the time being. So let's check the re reset behavior. So we press reset and give the four and one extra clocks. Reset goes off. So if on the other hand we're in the, that mode and we reset, yeah, that's great. That's working brilliant. Okay, last thing I want to do is for today is get this back on the scope and see what the reset line looks like in comparison to the clock. All right, so the purple trace should be the reset signal. Now, because of the way the set reset latch works we've got both a rising and a falling version of this so I've changed the trigger to falling to see the end of the signal as it appears on the LED and the clock signal which I will pick up from here So we'll always see more clocks than we expect to see because whichever clocks happen while my finger's still on the reset button are going to come through. Okay, there's one other thing I'd like to look at. Okay, so this should capture me a signal when the latch changes state. 
So this is demonstrating one last thing that I want to look at on the changeover. OK, so what we're seeing there is a partial clock at the point of the changeover, because there's nothing to stop the changeover happening partway through a clock cycle. Okay, I've got a few ideas about what could potentially be used to resolve that. OK, this is a 574 latch chip. Now, I'm kind of just experimenting out loud now. Kind of want to see how this behaves. Oops, this is output enable. OK, so here's my idea. If I take this latch output and drive it into one of the inputs of this, take the output into that select line, and then drive this latch from the constantly going clock, what this will hopefully mean is the set reset latch I'm controlling here will actually only change on a clock. Well, that looks like it's working fine. Using eight separate latches to just get one feels like a bit overkill at this point. We've got three spare NAND gates, and we might well be able to construct a latch out of that. I'll have to plan out a circuit, but maybe we can do away with this chip. But what I don't want to do is be worrying about a partial clock when we change the state because that could potentially cause us all kinds of problems if we get a really short clock cycle because some things will respond correctly and some things won't if it's uh, close to the tolerance of what the parts can deal with. Well, I'm still really enjoying working on this circuit because it's nice and simple compared to the full CPU build, but I'll be back to that soon enough. Well, I hope you found this interesting. It's certainly been quite enjoyable for me at the moment. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you again soon.